welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to show how I built this um, landing table for the tables in our mudroom area. So the idea of using this is to actually sit down and wear the shoes when you leave the home. Um, so these are the mockups on Fusion 360. So what this is made up of is two sections, the top and the bottom. The top is the black and the bottom is the white. They are made up of 16 inches of uh, these legs. They are tapered at the bottom. The, the top section is made up of the 41 inches long two by twos and seven and a half inch two by twos that are on the side. And then we do the same thing at the bottom, create uh, uh, a section where we can put these slats uh, using rat nails and put those slats in there and uh, equally space them. Once that is done, put the top on. So first let's go and uh, I will show you how I built the top. So what I did first was actually start with uh, taking a one by eight. So one by eight is not actually one inch by eight inches. It's three fourth inches by seven one by four inches. So what I'm doing is actually measuring 48 inches. So that is uh, the width of um, the, um, the top region. So all I'm doing is making appropriate cuts to create two sections. So each board is eight feet long, so 48 is four feet. So basically once I cut it in half, this is what I'm gonna get. So here I'm taking advice of my wife and trying to figure out which section we wanna keep it in the top. The knots on top actually give a wonderful pattern. So that is why we were trying to choose the correct pattern um, or the most pleasant pattern. So now what I'm doing is actually um, drilling pocket holes on the side. Um, so the idea is to actually connect these two one by eights using pocket holes. Um, you only want to do this on one side. So once I'm done, I just place it right next to it and then mark where I had the holes so that I can use the other side and make holes in the regions that don't have holes on the other section. That will make sense once I start uh, connecting these two boards together. Um, so in this case, um, now I'm going to lay them right next to each other um, and probably try to get some glue. And uh, because this is actually a 3 4 inch depth, uh, for this board, we use one, one by four inches pocket screws. Um, so you can buy them in a pack of hundreds or five hundreds. Um, so here I place the glue, use some clamps to make sure that they are on the same level. Um, and then use an impact driver to actually drive these screws. Makes a life so much easier using these tools. Now that the screws on the end are fixed, all I'm doing is driving the screws on the other side and uh, sanding it a little bit. Um, so, because there are like sharp edges. So let's look at the top. So in order to create this particular shape, I create a round over first using a trim router and then a chamfer at the bottom. So the idea is to actually give the top a look as though it is really thin um, yet sturdy. So uh, I'm using a trim router here. The trim router has a round over um, bit on the top and I have a 3D printed edge guide that I used to actually uh, create a uniform um, round over all throughout. So now I'm testing it out initially on a on a, just a scrap piece of wood. This is the bottom side. So in the bottom side, I use a chamfer bit. Um, so this actually creates a chamfer um, and uh, gives that sleek look to the top. So I sand the top a bit using an 80 grit sandpaper. Um, but the thing is, there is a little bit of gap in certain regions. So what I do next is actually uh, put a little bit of glue and then sawdust. Um, so that is the dust that was collected at the bottom of the saw and uh, fill the holes or these tiny little imperfections in the seam 
So once that uh, dries a little bit, I take the sander and sand it again. This kind of gives a smooth look on the top. Now comes uh, the time to actually cut uh, various two by twos uh, for the legs. So initially what I do is uh, cut the 41 inches. So we need four such pieces. So these are two 41 inches. Next, I cut in seven and a half inch of uh, the two by twos. Um, so we need a few of those pieces. So this is the third 41 inch piece and then the fourth 41 inch piece. Now I cut um, the seven and a half inches of uh, wood. So this is the third two by two that I use. Um, so here I cut one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. Once that is done, now I'm going to start cutting the legs. All I need are 16 inch legs. So one, two, three, four. I also needed a few seven and a half inches. Uh, sections as well. So now we go and move over to the 1x3s. Here I use the 7.5 inch sections to actually mark a stop block over there that kind of gives us consistent cuts. Here I'm adjusting that and just making 12 pieces of 7.5 uh, inches of these uh, blocks. So these are the slats that actually go at the bottom section. Once that is done, I take another one by three and uh, use that 41 inch long um, section to actually mark out the 41 inches over there. So what I'm going to do with this one by three is actually cut it in half. So I put it on a foam board, use a circular saw, uh, set it to half the width of the one by three and use that. Um, you don't have to be precise to do that. But here, what I'm going to do next is uh, create the taper on the legs. Um, so the idea is to actually create a miter angle of five degrees. And um, this takes a little adjustment to find um, the correct the section that you want to cut off. So in this case, we're going to cut off three inches from the bottom. So um, once that is set, you want to create a stop block over there and cut that section and uh, rotate this leg by 90 degrees. Here I keep fumbling trying to figure out which is the correct face that I have to cut, but right now, yep. So now we rotate it by 90 degrees with the cut side facing up and create another cut. So we want to create this taper just on two sides uh, for all the legs. Um, so once this is done, this kind of gives it a sleek, you know, professional look for the legs. Um, so now we're going to repeat this for the rest of the four legs. Everything is cut. Uh, we use a 80 grit uh, sanding um, device to actually sand the different faces of these uh, two by twos that we have already cut. Once the sanding is complete, we use uh, the pocket hole jig again uh, to create pocket holes. So what I'm doing initially is creating pocket holes on two sides of these seven and a half inch two by twos. Uh, once that is uh, complete, uh, we're going to make these pocket holes also on those uh, 41 inch long uh, sections of these two by twos as well. So what I forgot to do here is actually make pocket holes to actually uh, connect this to the top section. I will do that later. So this is the final assembly time. Um, so I'm putting all the pieces together, setting up um, the correct screws. Um, so because these are two by two, so we use um, two and a half inches uh, pocket hole screws. Um, so here, um, in order to reinforce these connections, I also use wood glue to connect any two joints over here. Um, keeping a clamp handy is very useful. Um, so all I'm doing is uh, connecting the two sections on either side of the bench. Um, so that is the top and that is the bottom. So once one end is done, um, we repeat the same process for the other side.
So this is where I realized that I forgot to make holes uh, for connecting this section to the top. So I have set the stop lock on the jig to 3 4 inches. So I'm going to use a 1 1 by 4 inch pocket hole screws to connect this section to the top. Um, so that's what I'm doing is creating these holes and these holes will go from the bottom all the way to the top. Once that's done, uh, I use a scrap ply that I had um, so that that kind of creates the top or mimics the top. Um, so I just put that and then put all these sections on, on, on it. Um, so here, uh, initially, I connect these 41 inch things to the two sides. Once that is done, I will create these cross beams, um, connect those cross beams to the top. So now um, I'm just going to screw in the bottom portion to the bottom region. Um, so these are the other 41 inch things. Once that's done, um, I'm going to use those cut one by threes in half, uh, glue that down and then uh, use brad nails. In this case, I uh, use a really long two inch brad nails um, and uh, connect that section to those uh, bottom section. This is where the slats are going to uh, lay. Uh, I'm going to repeat this for the other side as well. Uh, once that is done, I'm going to screw that in and then put the slats. So these are the slats that are seven and a half inches as well. So all I'm doing is uh, trying to space them evenly and making sure that it goes into um, those two 41 inch sections. Um, and here I just have a consistent distance between these slats. Once that is set, I'll use a little bit of glue and uh, brad nails to connect these slats. Um, to the bottom section that we uh, brad nailed into and uh, all I'm using is that stop lock to actually create a consistent distance between these slats. So overnight, I stained the top with this black color stain, kind of uh, looks like burnt wood. Um, so I wanted to create a contrast between the top and the bottom, that's why I created these uh, contrast between the black and the white. What I'm doing here is actually measuring two inches from the sides and um, putting in some tape. So that gives me a guide as to where um, I can put the bottom section. So I stained the bottom section in white. Um, so here there's a little bit of white stain along with uh, the appropriate polyurethane coat on top. And I'm using again the one one by four inch um, pocket screws um, and driving those screws to connect the bottom section to the top. And uh, and the bottom of these feet, I just use these adjustable feet from uh, Home Depot. 
and this is the final piece uh, so this is going to be where it's going to stay for a while and uh, help us uh, during wearing our shoes when we get out of the house so enjoy these b-roll of this bench <laughs> <laughs>